This is your USMNT Abroad weekend and Monday update from April 29th to May 2nd of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to another US Men's National Team Abroad series where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. But today, the update is on Tuesday, which means we'll update you on the games played on Monday. And the reason we're doing that is because Dustin, the channel producer, was attending this Monday RB Leipzig versus Gladbach, Joe Scally versus Tyler Adams. We'll update you guys throughout the video about that game, but that's why we pushed this episode to Tuesday, which is much better because then I can give you the Monday games as well. With that said, everyone, this Wednesday, we will be doing the CONCACAF Champions League final live watch along here on the channel, Seattle Sounders versus Pumas. You know, a historic final where the Sounders will break the attendance record of the CCL. And, you know, they need a fight and win. You know what? <laughs> Maybe that chant shouldn't happen. Okay, do different chants. Don't, don't do the fight and win chant. Regardless, I'm hoping MLS will finally end its drought and defeat a Liga Mekis team. I will be cheering for the Sounders. We'll be doing a live watch along here on the channel. So I hope to see you there on Wednesday. With that said, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like button before we start the episode. We're, it's coming to an end the season, so USMNT Abroad will be done soon. So more people can find us. Make sure to smash the like button. Let's try to hit 1,000 likes like we did two weeks ago, and maybe I'll bring Tactical Dog back. Maybe. All right. Thank you very much. Let's play the intro, and let's get started. Before I get to the performance updates, let's quickly go through one transfer rumor that I haven't talked about here on the channel, and I probably should because it's likely going to happen during this summer. Jordi Mihailovic has now been linked to AS Roma in Italy. Also, many other clubs are interested, such as Bologna and Atalanta, and Montreal apparently wants $10 million for the American midfielder. All right, by the way, the account on screen there, US Soccer Plus, go give them a follow on Twitter. Great account for quick updates on US men's national team, just like USMNT only. In regards to that, Jordi Mihailovic, I think it is time for him to go to Europe and go to a top five league he's been balling out in mls for two straight seasons but we'll see we'll keep you all posted mihailovic is a transfer that i fully expect to happen this summer now off to the performance updates and let's start with christian pulisic from chelsea on sunday pulisic started off on the bench and came in at the 68th minute for chelsea during their 1-0 loss to everton in the english premier league in terms of pulisic's performance it was quiet he roamed around a lot towards the right side and centrally at times and even on the left side of the field a few times throughout the match. So he was kind of all over the place, but mostly on the right side. Chelsea was kind of messy tactically towards the final 20 minutes as they were trying desperately to break down Everton's low block as they were down one nothing. Now, this loss does affect Chelsea quite a bit because Arsenal is right near them in fourth place and Chelsea is currently in third but it actually affects Leeds United a lot more. And we'll talk about that later in the video, about why it affects Jesse Marsh and Leeds more and puts them in trouble. But yeah, it definitely affects Chelsea as well because they're still not locked into the top four or even top three for the Champions League spot. Now, Weston McKennie is still out, but he's back into training with Juventus. So the next update is on Serginho Dest from Barcelona. So as we all know, Dest is injured and done for the season. However, it has been reported that he will not leave this summer and he is in the long-term plans of Barcelona and Xavi, which is great news. It's a massive club and his childhood club. I keep hoping he does succeed there. Also, he's just 21 and I think he will be at Barcelona for the long run and will be very successful. Regardless, he's probably one of the most disrespected players in CONCACAF I've seen people compare him to Richie Larea that can even get minutes at nothing enforced and yeah definitely one of the most disrespected players in CONCACAF alongside Keylor Navas probably Keylor Navas is number one and Des is number two right there now Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig on Thursday Tyler Adams started and went to full 90 minutes for Leipzig during their 1-0 win over Rangers for the first leg of the Europa League semifinals now I know this is not a weekend update but it's worth mentioning because Leipzig might win the Europa League Tyler also played very well in the midweek game on Monday, Tyler Adams and Joe Scali faced each other as RB Leipzig lost to Borussia Mönchengladbach 3-1. But they both sort of stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes. Tyler Adams actually stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for RB Leipzig. And Joe Scali came in at the 91st minute for Gladbach. Now, Dustin did go to this game to specifically scout these two players. So, a moment of silence to Dustin for getting scammed 
by the Germans. But hey, if you do want to see the full vlog of Dustin getting scammed in Germany, drop a comment down below. We'll gladly release it later today. Dustin did make a five to six minute vlog showing the full experience in Bundesliga, so don't miss out on that. And in the process, he got scammed because he did go to watch Adams and Skyly, and well, you all know by now how that went. So yeah, drop a comment down below and we'll gladly release our producer getting scammed later today. Next up is Jesse Marsh. And I know he's not a player, but I do have a big update on him because it's a little worrisome, their situation in the Premier League right now. On Saturday, Leeds United lost to Manchester City 4-0. I watched this game, trying to see if Jesse Marsh would pull some trick and hold off a far superior Manchester City side. And well, he really did not. Or kinda did. I mean, the 2-0 lead Manchester City got was offset pieces. So they were holding their own against City in open play for the most part, which is great. On offense, they were just not able to combine, and Leeds was not very good in transition as well, or very effective. That would probably be the right word. The problem here is in the relegation battle, in previous years, you've seen teams being just fine with 34 to 35 points. Now, Leeds has 34 right now with four games to play, so you would think they are safe. Well, I thought they were, but they are not. They currently sit on the first position outside of the relegation zone, just two points ahead of Everton. But... Everton has a game to play. So if Everton wins that one game they have to play, they have five games left and Leeds has four, they're ahead of Leeds. So Leeds could get relegated with 34 points. They could get relegated with 37. Now, Burnley also did bounce back after they fired Sean Dyke and are now ahead of Leeds on goal differential, which I didn't expect that when they fired Sean Dyke. And it's mostly due to Leeds having the worst defense in the English Premier League with 72 goals allowed. The worst defense. Thank you. Bielsa. So Leeds United are still in control, sort of, but relegation is still a possibility, a very strong one, unfortunately. And as I said, I thought it was over with Burnley, but Burnley's revival kind of screwed it all over. And Everton is a strong team, and I think Everton will escape. So it's probably going to be between Burnley and Leeds. Now, in regards to this game, we're going to jump right to the goalkeepers, and we'll start with Zach Steffen from Manchester City. So Zach Steffen stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Manchester City, but there's one player that's not American in Manchester City that I want to talk about very quickly, because a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that Arsenal was interested in signing Gabriel Jesus, and him moving away from Manchester City would unleash his full potential. But ever since Gabriel Jesus has been linked to the Gunners, he scored four goals against Watford, one goal against Manchester United, and one goal against Leeds United. This man is doing all he can to stay away from Arsenal. Smart guy. Staying in the goalkeepers, now we're going to talk about Ethan Horvath from Nottingham Forest. And since we're talking about Nottingham Forest, let's also talk about Alex Maiten, their winger. On Saturday, Horvath stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes while Alex Maiten started off on the bench and came in at the 76th minute for Nottingham Forest during their 5-1 win over Swansea. Now, Maiten scored for Nottingham Forest their fifth goal in this match. They currently sit in third place, only three points behind Burnmouth, that is in second. So three points away from a direct qualification spot in the English Premier League. And they do face Burnmouth this Tuesday. By the time you're watching this, the game's either happening or done. If you can, try to watch it if you're watching this right now and the game's going on. Now, they do beat Burnmouth in goal differential. So if Nottingham Forest beats Burnmouth, they will acquire the second place with only one round left in the English Championship. And they could go back to the Premier League. And don't forget, Nottingham Forest does have two UEFA Champions League titles. Moving forward in the field, now let's go to the center backs. And we'll start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. On Saturday, John Brooks started and went the full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg during their 1-1 draw with Stuttgart in the Bundesliga. Now, John Brooks played as a left center back in the back four formation. He also did score in the 13th minute off a header during a corner kick for Wolfsburg. The long passes were a bit off for Brooks in this match. And for this one, he had eight clearances, one interception, one dribble pass, lost all two of his ground duels, won two out of four aerial duels, had 52 touches, which is kind of low for him, and 87.5% passing accuracy. Oh, and Kevin Paredes did not make the bench for this one. So John Brooks, which the whole reason Greg didn't bring him, Greg never said it was an attitude issue. He said it was form. He's definitely in, to a bare minimum, good form, right? Not amazing, but in decent to good form. So if he's not in the Nations League roster, <laughs> I don't know what it is anymore. I don't know, man. I mean, if he's not there, then it just means him and Greg actually do have a problem. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Next up is Chris Richards and Justin Che from Hoffenheim. So Chris Richards is done for the season, as we said, due to a muscle injury. Now, Justin Che stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their loss to Freiburg over the weekend. Now, let's go to France and talk about Eric Palmer-Brown and Tim Weah because Tra 
and Liu faced each other over the weekend. On Sunday, Palmer Brown started and went the full 90 minutes for Trot during their 3-0 win over Liu. Palmer Brown played mostly as a central center back in a back three. Now, Tim Weah started for Liu as well, playing out wide and also played the full 90 minutes. Trot defeated Liu 3-0, which just adds on to the horrible season that the current French champs have had. Honestly, Weah did not have a good season either and neither did Jonathan David that started burning hot and then cooled off during the second half of the season. For this match, Tim Weah had 51 touches, 84% passing accuracy, one key pass, one shot on target, and one shot off target. He also won four out of six ground duels. Now, Palmer Brown had three clearances, two interceptions, one tackle, won one out of one ground duel, had 36 touches only, and a 74% passing accuracy. Next up is Mark McKenzie from Genk in Belgium. On Friday, McKenzie started and went the full 90 minutes for Genk during their 4-2 win over Michelin. Last but not least on the center back section is Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic and James Sands from Rangers as they did face each other over the weekend. On Sunday, CCV started and went the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 1-1 draw with Rangers in the Scottish Premiership. As for James Sands, he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Rangers. With only three games left and a six-point lead, it's safe to say that Celtic will be the Scottish champions of this season, unlike last season that Rangers won the league. This game was key for Rangers. If they had won, they would have closed the gap to just three points, but now it's pretty much game, set, and match. Now let's move on to the fullbacks, and we'll start with Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream from Fulham. On Monday, Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson started and went the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 7-0 win over Luton Town in the English Championship. So the good here is Anthony Robinson was back in the starting 11 and played the full 90 minutes. Fulham got another 7-0 win this season. I think that's probably the third or fourth. They've scored a lot of goals in the championship on a very dominant campaign, and they are now officially the champions of the English championship. They were already officially promoted to the English Premier League next season. Now they're officially the champions with a very dominant campaign with 90 points in 45 matches played. There's still one more game in the season, but it doesn't even matter to them. So congratulations to Fulham, Robinson, and Tim Ream for the championship, the trophy, and for going back to the English Premier League. Now Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista. On Sunday, Cannon started as a right center back in a back three for Boa Vista and played the full 90 minutes during Boa Vista's 2-1 win over Moreirense in Liga NOS. Next on the list is Sam Vines from Antwerp in Belgium. On Sunday, Vines started and played 71 minutes for Antwerp during their 0-0 draw with Union Saint in Belgium. Next up is George Bello from Arminia Bellenfeld. On Saturday, Bello started off on the bench and came in at the 72nd minute for Arminia Bielenfeld during their 1-1 draw with Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga. Now, relegation looks very likely for them unless they can finish in third to last and then they'll have one playoff match against the third seed of Bundesliga 2 and that would be their last hope and probably their best bet right now. Now, the last fullback that I want to talk about here is Jonathan Gomez from Real Sociedad B. On Monday, Jonathan Gomez was not available for Real Sociedad B because he was returning from the trip from Orlando where he played with L3 over the midweek versus Guatemala. You know, the game that I attended and we have a vlog out for it if you want to watch that. Okay, now time for the midfielders and we'll start with Yunus Musa from Valencia. On Saturday, Yunus Musa started off on the bench and pretty much stayed there the full 90, kinda. I mean, well, he came in at the 93rd minute during their 1-1 draw of Levante in La Liga, so he pretty much didn't play. Now, Jose Gaia got a red card in the first half for Valencia, so that might have affected Musa's minutes off the bench as well. You know, a left back got a red card, so you have to sacrifice another position. Maybe Yunus Musa would have got more minutes if Gaia, the left back, hadn't gotten a red card because I mean Yunus Musa ain't a left back so definitely changes the substitution dynamics of a team. Alan Sonora did not play for Independiente over the weekend neither did Johnny Cardoso for Internacional those are the two South Americans. Next up is Tenor Tesman and Gianluca Busio from Venezia. On Sunday Busio and Tesman started on the bench and stayed there the full 90 minutes during Venezia's 2-1 loss to Juventus. Now Weston McKinney as I said earlier in the video was still not available for Juve despite being back into training. With four games to be played in the Serie yeah, Venezia's fate is pretty much settled. They would need to win three out of four matches to escape relegation to a minimum. That might still not be enough 
considering they have won five games all season long, I find it unlikely that they can pull three wins with four games to be played. With that said, I don't know the situation with Tanner Tessman and Gianluca Busio, whether they'll leave or not. We'll keep you all updated every week, and during the summer, if a transfer happens, we'll definitely update you as well. But as of now, Venezia is likely going to be in the Serie B next season, and right now, Gianluca Busio and Tanner Tessman would go play in the Italian second division for the 2022-2023 season. Now, Brendan Aronson from RB Salzburg. On Sunday, Brendan Aronson started off on the bench and came in at the 63rd minute for Salzburg during their 3-0 win over Reed in the Austrian Cup final. So, another trophy for Brendan, another trophy for RB Salzburg. RB Salzburg has won the last 9 out of 11 Austrian Cup editions. So, out of the last 11, they've won 9 of it. It's getting a little bit boring in Austria for RB Salzburg as they always win the league and they almost always win the cup. The good thing is Brendan Aronson is likely to leave this summer. We'll keep you all updated on that. We've heard rumors of Leeds United that can happen. We'll keep you all posted. Obviously, it'll depend if Leeds doesn't get relegated, but I do think he will leave RB Salzburg regardless. Next up is Julian Green and Tim Tillman from Firth. On Saturday, Tim Tillman started and pretty much played the full 90 minutes as he was subbed off at the 90th minute while Julian Green started off on the bench and came in at the 73rd minute for Firth during their 1-1 draw with Union Berlin. Now, there have been rumors that Greg Berhalter went to Germany to meet with Malik Tillman, the brother of Tim Tillman, German-American that plays for Bayern Munich, the 19-year-old, to recruit him for the U.S. men's national team. I can't confirm or deny it, but it seems like it's true. And if he does recruit this young, talented player, it'll be great news. Now, Luca De La Torre from Heracles in the Eredivisie. On Saturday, Luca De La Torre started and played 78 minutes for Heracles during their 1-1 draw with Twenty. For this match, Luca had 48 touches, 79% passing accuracy, one shot off target, had 4 out of 5 successful dribbling attempts, won 8 out of 13 ground duels, and 2 out of 5 aero duels. Now, we're not going to leave Netherlands yet. Time to talk about Cole Bassett from Feyenoord. On Sunday, Cole Bassett started off on the bench and came in at the 67th minute for Feyenoord during their 3-1 win over Fortuna Sittard. Feyenoord are pretty close to locking in third place in the Divisi. With three games to be played, they sit five points ahead of the fourth seed. And guys, next up on the list is Alex Mendes from Vizela. But before we get that, please make sure to hit the like button. All right, if you made it this far in the video, do that. It really helps the channel, helps more US soccer fans find us, and it helps boost my ego. So thank you very much. And Dustin's ego too. Our egos get boosted by it. So now Alex Mendes from Vizela in Portugal. On Saturday, Alex Mendes started and went to full 90 minutes for Vizela during their 4-2 loss to Porto in Liga NOS. Now Mendes scored a beautiful goal for Vizela, where he cut middle to his left and hit a banger from outside of the box. A great goal by Alex Mendes against a top Portuguese side. A player that has fallen off a bit from the US men's national team radar, but we should keep an eye on him. He's a very technical midfielder and has been having some good and bad moments in the Portuguese league this season, so we should definitely keep track of Alex Mendes. Next Next up is Dwayne Holmes from Huddersfield. On Saturday, Holmes started and played 65 minutes for Huddersfield during their 2-1 win over Coventry. Huddersfield has locked in a spot in the championship playoffs for a spot in the English Premier League. Okay, now we're going to go to the forwards and we'll start with Ricardo Pepe from Augsburg, which I think we placed the Linus curse on Pepe. I mean, Linus has been two seasons in Europe, but if this continues, I think we cursed Pepe. But we'll give it time. Next season is when I expect Pepe to get a few goals in Bundesliga, and I'll tell you why. On Saturday, Pepe stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Augsburg for the second game in a row. However, Augsburg is only one point away from escape relegation, so they should be fine. Or they just need Stuttgart to drop points in the games that are left. With that said, that's why I expect Ricardo Pepe to score a few goals in Bundesliga, much more adapted to the league with a full preseason with Augsburg, and because they will be still in Bundesliga, I expect them to have a much better season. Remember, He's only 19. He arrived mid-season also. Having a full preseason with Augsburg will definitely help Ricardo Pepe much more. Plus, he'll have those six months of Bundesliga experience that he'll bring on to the next season. So I expect him to do a lot better next season. Maybe I'm just deluded. Maybe I'm just optimistic. I think I'm being pretty rational here and realistic. But with that said, let's go to the next player. And the next player is another player that doesn't play much right now, and that's Matthew Hoppy from Mallorca. On Sunday, Hoppy started off on the bench and kind of stayed there for pretty much the entire game as he came in at the 89th minute while Mallorca was down 2-1 and chasing their second goal to take a point away from this match against Barcelona. But it did not work, and they ended up losing to Barcelona 2-1. With four matches to be played, Mallorca currently sits just one point clear of the relegation zone. 
As for Matthew Hoppy's performance in the very little, little amount of minutes that he was in the field, he played as a center forward and he touched the ball maybe once or twice. Now the last midfielder of this video is Richie Ledesma from PSV. On Sunday, Richie Ledesma started off on the bench and came in at the 90th minute, so pretty much stayed on the bench the full match for PSV during their 4-2 win over Willem II in the Divisie, or Willem II. Depends on how they want me to call this club's name. I'm not sure. Now with three games left, PSV currently sits four points behind Ajax, so it's a pretty tough task to catch up and win the league. Definitely not easy to close a four point gap with only nine points to be played, especially considering Ajax will probably win at least six points out of the nine. Now let's talk about a guy that can't stop scoring, and that's Pifok from BSC Young Boys in Switzerland. On Sunday, Pifok started and went to full 90 minutes for BSC Young Boys during their 2-1 win over Sion. For this match, Pifok converted a PK at the 97th minute to close the match and get them the win, a very clutch PK. Pifok has a total of 27 goals this season combined with the Swiss League and the UEFA Champions League with a total of 44 matches played. This has been a very good season for Pifok. And I still believe he deserves more chances with the US men's national team. I don't think it's fair to judge him based off that one miss against Mexico. I know he's had other performances that weren't very good, but I would persist on him a little bit more. Next up is another player that lately, not the whole season, but lately, he just can't stop scoring. And that is Haji Wright. On Saturday, Haji Wright started and played the full 90 minutes for Antalya Sport during their 2-2 draw with Trabzonspor in the Turkish League, aka the Turkish League champs. Trabzonspor will be the Turkish League champs. Haji Wright scored their second goal in this match and the finish was easy, but the first touch he took to get in that position was fantastic. So that has to be said. I know the finish in the small box is easy, but that first touch was brilliant. He also did score a goal early in the game. However, for that occasion, he was offsides. He almost had a brace in. Haji Wright has now scored for five consecutive matches. He has most certainly earned a call up for the US men's national team, but just but I am still not sold on him yet. He's definitely in great form and deserves a call up for the United States and some opportunity with the national team but I'm still not sold on it. He can be very streaky at times and this just might be a hot streak or maybe he's just developing and getting better. We'll see. Haji Wright definitely earned the call up from Greg Berhalter and maybe we'll see him in Nations League. Now Nico Joachini from Montpellier in the French League or League uh, You gotta say it as if there's something stuck on your throat. On Sunday, Joachini started off on the bench and came in at the 86th minute for Montpellier during their 2-2 draw with Metz in the French League. Now, the player that I have good and bad news, which is Josh Sargent. Well, the good news is Josh Sargent was back from injury, and the bad news was he got injured again. <laughs> yeah, so actually pretty much just bad news, right? The bad news kind of cancels out the good news in this situation. On Saturday, Josh Sargent started off on the bench and came in at the 67th minute for Norwich and then left the game at the 81st due to an injury during their 2-0 loss to Aston Villa. So Sargent was returning from injury and came off due to injury during his return, as I said. It's essentially the return of those who never came back. Okay, now let's move on to the video with Chris Mueller from Hibernian in Scotland. On Saturday, Chris Mueller started off on the bench the f and stayed there the full 90 minutes for Hibernian during their 1-0 loss to Livingston in Scotland. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button to help support the channel and subscribe if you made it this far in the video. Don't forget that on Wednesday, we will be doing the live watch along for Seattle Sounders versus Pumas, a historic game. If MLS wins, it will definitely be historic and they will be breaking the CCL attendance record. All right, thank you very much for watching, everyone, and have a great day.